I am Iman, Zia's mother. Actually, I'm not prepared for this, but <laughs> I'm very happy, really, for Ziad and Mariam. I am very blessed to have a daughter-in-law like Mariam. And I hope she's going to be blessed with Ziad. Oh. <laughs> um, I really have nothing prepared. All I have to say is, I have an advice for both of you. I don't know if I said it already, but I'm going to repeat it again. OK? <laughs> for you, Ziad, number one advice is, I just want to remind you, you are going to be building a foundation for this life with Mariam. Without your foundation, she cannot build a home for you. So make sure your foundations are very strong. For you, Mariam, hopefully my son will provide the, wrong, the strong foundation that you want. <laughs> We'll build a wonderful life together. So make sure this is a partnership. And without the foundation, we cannot have the big building of this new life you're going to have together. Again, it's your responsibility before Mariam's. <laughs> I'm honored to see all of you here today. Thank you for sharing our happiness. Um, Mariam is my first child. She's not a child anymore, as you can see. Um, we came here, my husband and I, I didn't know almost, I didn't know anybody. And it was like a big responsibility. But alhamdulillah, I found a great community. And all of you contributed to this day. All of you helped me raise Mariam to reach that milestone today. Uh, Mariam was basically raised here. That was her second home. Uh, she went to school right there, you know, behind that wall. Um, she came to uh, halqas twice a week at least. She was here for every Ramadan, uh, hearing Sheikh Sayyid and his recitation of the Quran. All of you helped me, and all of you helped us. I had in mind to talk about uh, Mariam and Ziad. I'm very honored to have a, a new son today. With Ziad, I really feel very comfortable. I feel like he's part of the family. Even like from the very first time I saw him, I felt like very comfortable around him. I felt like he could really be my son, you know? By the way, all the things they say about mothers-in-laws, it's not true. <laughs> I cannot talk about marriage without remembering um, my friend Alia Zaki. She was supposed to be with us today, but she passed away last week. Alia and her husband Ali okay, were great examples for anyone who wants to start a happy life and do great in the society. That's because they were the most generous people I've ever seen. In a lot of cases, you find like one spouse generous and kind, and the other one is holding him or her back. But in the case of Ali and Ali, they were both always working together. You cannot go to their house and leave sad or in need of anything. They were always there for every one of us. They helped everyone in every and each way. And it didn't really matter to them who you are. They were there for you. And I believe that this is a great example of how when a husband and wife have the right goal and the right values, they can be a great asset to the society. They can always reach the hearts of the people. And they can always make this world a better place. Mariam and Ziad, I'm so happy for you today. And I ask so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to bless our union and to give you a happy life. Quote, wishing to be friends is quick work. 
but friendship is a slow ripening fruit. End quote, Aristotle. Zizo, we've known each other for a long time. Our superstar rap group, LLK, is near its 10 year anniversary. Quote, a friend is someone who knows all about you and still loves you. End quote. Albert Hubbard, you tolerated our rap skills, my flaws, and my deepest secrets. Quote, friend is one that knows you as you are, understands where you have been, accepts what you have become, and still gently allows you to grow. End quote, William Shakespeare. We had big rap dreams and big goals, and we accomplished them. We were better than Neged's band, Chaosis. I'm thankful that you've been on this journey with me. Quote, lots of people want to ride with you in the limo, but what you want is someone who will take the bus with you when the limo breaks down. End quote, Oprah Winfrey. In our case, we never had a limo, <laughs> and our bus kept breaking down. <laughs> But nonetheless, I'm happy that you took this journey with me. Quote, friendship is the hardest thing in the world to explain. It's not something you learn in school, but if you haven't learned the meaning of friendship, you really haven't learned anything at all. End quote. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was right. Friendship is hard to explain. Muhammad Ali won a lot. In fact, he was 32 and 0 at one point. The same record we had against Neged's band, Chaosis. <laughs> Quote, try to have as many as possible true friends, for they are the supplies in joy and the shelters in misfortunes. End quote. Hadith Bihar al-Anwar, Kitab al-Ashura, 51. Thanks for being a supply of joy and a shelter in misfortune. Inshallah, you and Mariam can be those constants for each other. So just a uh, warning. I have a hoarse voice because I lost it at Dave and Buster's <laughs> celebrating this guy's today. We were playing that little basketball game and we spent maybe 45 minutes trying to get to 60. And Ahmed Mustafa finally did and he said, I'm going to try one more time. And we got to 90. Not, he broke the record at Dave and Buster's, which we know is everyone's dream. You got a baller for real, Mariam. Congratulations. That's crazy. <laughs> so uh, Ziad and I actually met at UCLA about uh, seven years ago. Uh, I was a freshman. And actually, the way we went was through basketball. Uh, I was invited to a basketball tournament uh, for the MSA. And I walk in, and I'm like all stretching. I'm warmed up. And we start playing, and this guy is uh, he's on the other team. And he gets the ball, and this guy, he has this shot that kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, like he's, if you've ever seen Lion King, like the way they raise Simba, it's kind of like that, but more aggressive. And uh, his heels click, like in this motion, like he's trying to go to Kansas or something. It's really weird. But this guy was hitting parts of the rim I didn't know you could hit. Like the underside, somehow. And I think the rim in a whole different gym. But he kept shooting. So I was like, I have to be friends with this guy. Amazing confidence, irrational confidence. Uh, since that day, uh, we did become friends. I later actually saw him throw a football, which he's pretty good at. And I thought I could kind of uh, groom him into making the NFL and then ride his coattails as his like, stylist or his coach or something. Uh, time will tell if you ever deliver on that. But um, so I will say my friendship with Ziad is actually uh, probably the most uh, uncomfortable uh, relationship that's developed. <laughs> to give you context, uh, I'm from Yemen. I'm of Yemeni descent. Um, and I vividly remember when I was younger talking to my older brother about a friend of mine in school. And he sat me down and he told me very pinpointedly, he said, I always remember the difference between friends and family. There's a clear line. There's some things you share with family that you don't share with friends. Always remember your family's always there for you. Your friends, they come and go. And I kind of held that going through high school and I took that into college with me. So friends for me were kind of a source of entertainment, something to do, but that was pretty much where the line was drawn. If you know Ziad, you know that he's uh, a pretty 
um, emotional guy. He's very affectionate. Um, and as our friendship developed, he'd do things like call me and say, hey man, uh, I, I just want to let you know I love you. <laughs> and I, I thought he was like being drafted into the military or something. I didn't know what was happening. And I'm like, uh, I didn't know to, how to respond. I wasn't really equipped. So I'd say things like, oh, thanks for sharing, like that kind of response. <laughs> Uh, he'd, al he'd also, uh, he would regularly introduce me as his best friend, which also was kind of, kind of took me aback. You know, I'd be like, oh, this, oh, this is my guy. Oh, here's my, my, here's my, my bro. And he'd be like, oh, this is one of my best friends. And I'd be like, this is escalating fast. <laughs> so it, it really kind of, it, it was a lot for me to take in. As that developed, I kind of realized that what he was doing over time was blurring that line. He was teaching me what it was to be a good friend, to actually care beyond a surface level, to allow you to be vulnerable, and to trust yourself with somebody else. And I sincerely thank you that I can stand here today and say that I don't really know what the difference between those two are anymore. You're the first person to show me that friends and family can be synonymous. So, um, So Zed, I just want to let you know. <laughs> no, really, as my best friend, as my brother, I love you. Congratulations. Actually, I'm not going to talk about Zed much, um, except the fact that I'm very thankful we met in seventh grade of Sunday school. Um, I'm a year older, and when I got here, in, what, 2001, my parents put me in Sunday school. Uh, the eighth grade class was full. So I had to join him and Muhammad Abed, one of our other friends, in uh, seventh grade. And it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'll easily say that. I actually want to say a couple things about Amr, Amr and Tunti Iman. Um, they are a second set of parents to me. Um, they, these, these are not friends anymore. These are my brothers. Um, we would take two-hour bus rides to get to each other's homes because our parents were busy, and I was like, it's Saturday, let's watch football, let's do something, and so I'd get on the bus and end up in parts of San Jose I didn't know existed, um, and somehow still make it to, to Campbell, but it, it was incredible. Um, I would say Amma Am called me probably like every four months, and for like two and a half years, I didn't know how to say his number. So I would pick up the phone and be like, hello? He's like, Ahmed. Actually, Ahmed Dasa, right? That's, that's what he called me all the time. Um, and Tunti Iman has come and visited us in Sacramento. My wife and I, she is a wonderful, like, second mom. And I can't speak enough of how much they've done in raising Ziad. Um, and when Ziad told me he was getting married, I was like, oh, lucky girl. I wonder who. And then I met many of them and I understood. It was pretty uh, easy. Um, the first time we met to talk about the wedding and photography, they did that thing that couples do where they have these jokes and you're like, you guys done yet? <laughs> All right, okay, I'll, I'll be over here until you're done. Um, and that's kind of when I knew that this was perfect. And then, you know, I heard from my parents that they knew my name's parents and they spoke super highly of them. Um, and when I met my name's parents this morning when I came in, it felt like I was talking to family. So without a doubt, I'm incredibly happy for the both of you. Um, Ziad, I got other stuff to tell you that I left out of here. Um, but really, Jazakallah khair for having me, for having, letting me take pictures and trusting me with that. Um, I apologize to anybody whom I've been pushy with tonight. It's because of them, I promise. I'm not generally that way. Um, but yeah, Jazakallah khair. So uh, a lot of people don't know this. I've known Ziad. Um, since we were uh, 10 years old. Uh, we actually met at the airport. Both of our families were uh, flying to Cairo. And uh, uh, that's when we first met. And uh, ever since then, he's been like the uh, younger brother I never had. So, um, nor ever wanted, actually. <laughs> so, I actually wanted to share something a uh, little bit different with you guys. Uh, to give you a little bit more insight into uh, maybe the way Ziet thinks, um, kind of get more insight into uh, things that have happened in his life. Um, uh, so I actually found his uh, private Twitter account. 
And uh, I wanted to share with you guys a few uh, tweets. And Ziz was looking at me like, oh no, which, which Twitter account was it? And don't worry, Zizo, it's not uh, Alex Smith, super fan one, two, or three. <laughs> and uh, it's not Alex, at Alex Smith, please tweet me back. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so it's actually the one that um, you thought was a Google search box for about a few years. Um, the one uh, at how to get to Yahoo Mail. <laughs> so I want to read a few of those. Um, so if you guys know Zied, um, the thing about Zied is uh, when he puts his mind to something, he really wants to take it to the next level and emulate people that do that well. So he was really obsessed with um, Alex Smith, uh, the famous uh, 49ers quarterback. So a few of these Google searches he typed into uh, Twitter, uh, why Alex Smith not tweeting me back? <laughs> Alex Smith home address. Alex Smith barber address. <laughs> Does restraining order go on permanent record? <laughs> Application for witness protection program for non-witnesses. <laughs> so after the Alex Smith phase, uh, Zizo's uh, Google searches start to take a different form. Uh, mostly, uh, how many times can you refill a smart water bottle? <laughs> how many times can I wear a hat before washing it? How to blend in at Berkeley? Is kombucha halal? <laughs> when can I start calling myself doctor? What are particles? <laughs> How to say, I've been to Germany, <laughs> in German. <laughs> can you still grow at 27? <laughs> <laughs> and more recently, how to be a great husband to your wife. That's cute. That's good. <laughs> so, mashallah, Zizo, you have a lot of great qualities, and I think the qualities, inshallah, that will make you a great husband are that you're always inquisitive, you're always seeking knowledge, whether it's through means of uh, Twitter via Google search, <laughs> or uh, on your own through research, and you're always getting feedback and learning, so I think that will help you in being a great husband, inshallah, and I wish you guys uh, a happy marriage. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you both and um, bring you closer over the years, inshallah. Ziyad is um, requesting followers on all social media accounts right now. So um, we'll leave that information for you at the exits. Just keep that in mind. Um, so I want to say a few words, too. I'm just going to start by first saying, Maryam, welcome to the family. You've significantly improved the outlook for this family. Um, it was Ziyad who was kind of like the shining light, and then it's like, that's the shining light? Like, it's a little, all right, well, let's get another one in here. But thank you, and again, there's a lot of folks who are going to say wonderful things about you. I want to focus on Zizo because Zizo's my brother, and I want to take a serious tone here because um, <clears throat> I've been through a lot of things in life with Zizo. We have seen a lot of things together, but one of the most important things you need to know about Zizo is... He's not the guy to go to for fashion advice. He's not the guy to go to to find out how to say things in a nice way. He's not the guy to go to, where am I going with this, right? He's not the guy to go to if you want to pick out a nice new car. But that's the reason you go to Zizo. Because for real, if you know Zied, you know he keeps his head down. You know he works hard. You know he doesn't pay attention to all the entanglements of the world that aren't important, you know that he's the kind of person who keeps his head down and works hard. And the only time he looks up is when he's looking up in prayer and when he's looking up for advice from his older brother or from anyone else that he respects. Maybe not me. But that's when Zied's looking up. And I know growing up, Zied always looked up to me. Just two weeks ago, we were going to get boba. And this guy's asking me, what are you going to get any good? That's just always been who he is. But from, from very young, from very early on in our lives, I've always felt like there's something strange about him always asking me for advice. Because I've always felt a little insecure. Like, why, why is Zizo asking me? Like, I always looked at this guy, and he knew what he was doing. He was so focused. He was so careful about what he was doing. He was a meticulous planner. And that's why he's Dr. Zied right now. That's why he's Zied sitting next to Mediam, his wonderful new wife. That's why he's Zied the person that I look up to now. 
because Zizo is the kind of person that will always be there for you, no matter what. He will always be there for you. In the middle of the night, early in the morning, whenever it is, he's not going to be on CNN talking. He's not going to be out there doing anything like that. But he's going to be the one that answers the call and makes sure that you're OK. And that's the reason that I look up to you. That's the reason that anyone who knows you here looks up to you. That's why this hall is full of people that love you, truly love you. And like everyone here said, you call them best friend. You call them best friend. That's how you think of people. And everyone knows that about you. And you're my best friend, Zizo. So, I love you. Congratulations. I thought, I thought you said Tasneem was your favorite cousin. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, I mean, so, like, I wrote a lot of stuff, like, to say today. But they were all like separate essays. So I like started one, and then I like switched over to another like essay-ish, and then I switched over. And so um, I don't really know what to say. Like I mean, I don't know. There, there are a lot of stuff to say. But you know, like um, so scientific research, for instance, like um, says uh, says that once you meet a person, uh, it takes uh, like three seconds to make your first impression of them. And then uh, it also says seven seconds in other research, and then 30 seconds in like a bunch of other research stuff. But basically, it's all like under, you know, like two minutes. Um, so basically, but the first time I met Ziad, like I, it was, it was sort of, it was really recent. It was um, he was actually talking to Chef Muhammad outside, and um, I was walking by, and he told me, "Assalamualaikum, how are you? Because I was saying salam to Sheikh Muhammad, and right away, you know, I had my first impression. I was like, I was like, all right, mashallah, you know, this is a really good person. And we were, we didn't really know each other, so at that time, you know, um, like, yeah, like, you know, that's when we were getting to know each other. But I hadn't known that he was Yad, and he didn't know that I was Yusuf until next week when they came over. And so yeah, so so there was my first impression. And another thing that like science says is that um, over time, uh, like you know that initial impression, it's like sort of uh, you know like you're still not sure of that impression, and then over time, that impression is supposed to like either solidify or change, and like it has like solidified a bunch so far. So mashallah, like honestly, like yeah, and then um, and then you know I found out like he he read a lot of. Um, nerdy stuff, just like our family, so it fits in well. Alhamdulillah. And I think like all our conversations have been like stuff I don't really understand, so I think that's good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but like yeah, Alhamdulillah. I think it's it's um, been really great to know him. And as for um, Maryam, Maryam, um, you know, like I think Maryam is the person I usually turn to most, like when I want to. Um, say something weird that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so like, she's like, she's like always oh, there. So I'd, I'd literally go into her room. And then I'd be like, I don't know. I'd just say some weird stuff that I don't really understand. I go then and then yell at them. And she's like, yeah, I get you. And then I go back to my room and think about what I just said. But like, so Mariam's always been there, though. And um, so yeah, so like, yeah, mashallah, and you know, like um, all of them are, MashaAllah. All right, I don't, I don't even know what to say anymore. So MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Um, my dad doesn't let me go and stay the night out a lot. So I went to Maryam because many of my friends used to go to Tahajjud. I went to her and I was like, Maryam, I really want to go to Tahajjud, but I can't. And so every time Maryam used to come to my house during Ramadan, she'd go up to Baba and she'd talk to him and keep talking, talking. And at one point, Baba said yes. And <laughs> I, when Mama came to me and said I was allowed to go to the Hajjid, I kind of made a party. I was like, yes, I get to go to the Hajjid. And, and that night, all of my siblings went to sleep. My, me and my mom went out. And those, that night was the best night of my life. I'm so happy I got to go to, Hajj, to the Hajjid. I prayed, after, I prayed with Sheikh Sayyid. And my mom and I had awesome suhoor at the masjid. So I 
and will never fear to go to a medium when I have anything that I need to talk to her about. I trust her for advice when I need comfort. I need anything, I will go to medium and to sneem, of course. But um, <laughs> um, so I want to thank you for that, and I want to thank you for being here for me and for being the family that um, I really wish I had. That I really do have, but like, you know what I'm saying. You guys understand, right? <laughs> so, thank you. Barakallahu alaykum wa baraka alaykum wa jama'a baynakum fi khair and zayed. Welcome to the family. I am Tasneem, Maryam's younger sister. I wanted to start off firstly by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, for blessing us with such a beautiful occasion and for blessing us with such wonderful friends and family. Thank you all for being here with us today. I decided to keep a physical copy of my speech, obviously not because I procrastinated and didn't get to memorize my speech, of course, but because I know that the more I look around, the more I'm really going to realize that today is my sister's wedding. We used to speak about this day so hypothetically, and I know it's going to take a lot of processing to really internalize everything. I'm going to cry. I'm just saying that. Some of you are going to cry, and that's OK, because weddings are occasions of celebrations of our humanity. We can even make it like a game. You can count five seconds, or try to count five seconds, without my voice quivering, or my hand shaking, or me actually bursting into tears. People might think it's easier to write a speech as the sister, but after 20 years of living together, we have so many stories and shared memories that I can't do justice to. So many awkward ones, so many heartwarming ones. We've watched each other grow. And there was that beautiful moment when our two years no longer felt as they had when we were younger, when you'd be in second grade and I in kindergarten. We began to share more interests and, of course, clothes. We knew each other as a rawest, truest selves, and we still thought we were the coolest people in the world. When Allah created you, he not only created my older sister, he created my best friend. <laughs> okay. And I truly believe that it wasn't just coincidental that out of all the other souls, he chose us to be at this level of closeness with one another. A lot of my weaknesses are your strengths, and you always encouraged me to be stronger and closer to Allah. Our parents chose to name you after one of the most beautiful and pious women in history. And I've always found that to be very fitting, as I've always looked up to you. A typical underachiever, you memorized the Quran first, graduated from Berkeley first, got your first job. You always tried the cool new food places before I even knew that they existed. Ever since you were given an allowance and you began saving it, you'd always buy everyone gifts. The amount of thought that you put into gifts was insane. You'd always take me, Yusuf, and Salam out before I had a license. Some of my most precious memories with you were the spontaneous Umrah trip that we did last spring, doing our first Uthiyah together. Um, you always wrote these amazing Facebook wall posts that I still well, currently you're deactivated, but I'd look back at whenever I wanted to smile. Um, winning the Quran quest, and I remember choosing our team name, Honey Bunches of Boats. I still, we don't get the pun ourselves, so we just made it because I honestly don't know. It was Surat Al-Nahl, which means the bees. And um, <laughs> My favorite moments would be when you'd come home and we'd both share hilarious stories or mess-ups from our days. There are always many with us and laugh until, uh, until our eyes would disappear. We couldn't breathe, and the only sound that we would make would be one that could totally be featured on Animal Planet. <laughs> Sometimes we'd make fun of how high-pitched my voice would get, until one day I realized the explanation was, our conversations were always so fast-paced, I wouldn't have time to breathe before I had my next thought. We talk about everything, from Islam, to politics, to school, to the latest memes. And there were so many nights when we'd pretend to be asleep, when one of us would accidentally wake up a parent due to our inability to restrain our laughter. We recorded so many videos where we pretended to give advice to people who never asked us questions, and we knew nothing about the topic. <laughs> Maryam, I love you so much. 
and I'm certain our sisterhood will transcend this world into the next. A true friend for the sake of Allah, who shares my goals for both worlds, who always, who always wanted to compete with me in the good things, who whenever I had an idea would tell me, I'm down, who would tell me I was enough and deserved the best and would fight for me when I didn't have the energy to fight for myself. Some mornings, I'd wake up to the sound of your voice because that's when I knew the party would start in the kitchen. If I had known that the time that I had you all to myself and as a roommate <laughs> would be so short, I would have done more to spend time with you and I can't thank you enough. I keep speaking in the past tense, but I know, alhamdulillah, it's not over. I just now have a larger family to look forward to having. Ziad, the woman that you will be spending the rest of your life with is one of the most incredible, generous, bright, ambitious, determined, curious, honest people. She has this twinkle in her eyes when an exciting thought comes to mind, or her curiosity is sparked that you're going to know all too well. Your union is for Allah Ta'ala first and foremost. So remember that your intention should constantly be purified. I want to thank you for being such a wonderful human. May Allah increase you in goodness. Seeing my sister choose to, ser to share, seeing my sister choose someone to share the rest of her life with is not always the easiest. But you make it easier because my heart feels comfort that she chose you. And the fact, hearing from your friend's speech is that they all felt like you were their best friend really truly reminded me of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because there is a hadith which I do not remember, but it's a beautiful hadith where, which basically tells us that the Prophet ﷺ made everyone feel the level of special, um, to feel special enough that they were his best friend and everyone thought that they were his best friend. I wish you the best, a long, healthy, and blessed lifetime of growth and understanding and mutual respect and gratitude. Every moment with one another is precious. Each of you has a valuable dynamic to contribute. May you be protected and may the love between you only increase. Mama and Baba, thank you for everything that you all do. We are eternally grateful. Thank you for raising by my side amazing siblings. In a hadith from Sunan Abi Dawood, the Prophet وسلم, says, if anyone cares for three daughters, raises them to be upright, has them married, and treats them well, he will go to Jannah, paradise. So here's to the first one down. Please keep the couple in your du'a, and thank you all for sharing this special day with us. It truly means the world. Thank you so much. I am not going to do the heartfelt thing because I'm from New York and we don't do that where I come from. Uh, but it's true, every time I introduced my favorite cousins, it's because they are my favorite cousins. And all my cousins are. Um, grow Growing up, Tanta Marwa's kids, I, I'm not even going to try to explain it, but coming back, I, does, it wouldn't make sense if I didn't say it. I know that Maryam knows it, um, but none of you do. She's not listening to me right now because she's got a new favorite person in the room. But um, see, she really didn't hear that. <laughs> this is why we don't do this. Um, Ma but Maryam included, you are my favorite cousin, and my best friend, and my favorite sister, not my favorite sister, I, have a, I actually have a sister, I can't say that, but I love you, you are my sister. First and foremost, uh, by the lovely gathering that we have, each one of you is our extended you know, uh, family member, we are very happy, and without you, the night would have not been a joyful night. It is only with your presence and, and Allah's blessings and rahmah that we're having, enjoying these uh, few moments today, alhamdulillah. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to make it long. I just wanted to uh, just literally recap in, in, in maybe five minutes, you know, Maryam's growing and maybe uh, cover a little bit my first time that I met Ziad as well. So uh, Maryam was born and uh, I remember one of the brothers in the masjid came to me and she was still in the hospital. I was still trying to see how do I carry this little child, right? Very unexperienced father, I would say. And then the brother came to me and, and he said, oh, can I see uh, the new child, Maryam? I brought Maryam carrying her. And then, and then the brother said, this lady is going to grow up to become very beautiful. And alhamdulillah, she grew up to be 
And I think uh, beautiful in the heart, beautiful in her soul, and beautiful in her appearance. She has been all out beautiful, alhamdulillah. Maryam has, uh, Maryam has shown her signs, I guess, for love, for knowledge, even at the time that she was really kind of crawling on the floor. So her favorite book when she was like maybe uh, two years old was uh, Tafsir Al-Qurtubi, just 10 volumes. <laughs> Every time I say Allahu Akbar, I go to Salah, she grabs the book out and starts to, you know, you know, hungry, trying to read every word. She was not able to read at that time, but I think I can tell the I can tell the amount of passion she had for knowledge. And I said, yeah, even though I am losing my precious books, <laughs> you know, the girl is actually growing up to become very, you know, she has a lot of mashallah and love for knowledge. And uh, you know, years grow by, and I I could remember a lot of things. I do remember Maryam when she wor first went to college. Wallahi, I asked her. She obviously sees her father, you know, working. Uh, we work hard in engineering, right? It's a, it's a tough job. So she said, Baba, I told her, Marie, what do you want to do? You know, you're going to college right now, so what do you, what do you want to do? So she said, you know, I don't know. Uh, I can't tell you for sure what I'm going to be, but the one thing I for sure don't want to be is an engineer or to do this computer science. SubhanAllah, she graduated exactly with that, doing computer science. After going through many, you know, different uh, trials, and so I, I think she, she eventually understood. But um, <laughs> maybe I'm just so. But I, but during the course of her growth, at some point, Wallahi, I thought she's going to become a lawyer. Maryam was a lawyer, and the defendant has always been Marwa, my wife. You know, she's, <laughs> she's always trying to, you know. So so the way the way this would happen, you know, I would be sitting at work, and the phone rings, right? And I'm in a meeting and stuff like that. Miriam calls once and twice. She's persistent. So I, I pick up the phone and uh, I pick up. Hey, Miriam, what's going on? She says, Baba, everything is just fine. Everything is just great. I said, Miriam, what's going on? What, what happened? I'm in a meeting. No, Baba, I just want to tell you we're all safe. We're all good. <laughs> so I said, Miriam, no, please tell me, you know, what is it? She said, Baba, it's not Mama's fault. <laughs> the lady stopped suddenly in front of her. And she was on the speed limit, doing the right thing. I said, Mariam, you know, I mean, this, I didn't need all that introduction. Just tell me what's going on with it. You know, so she had always this kind of lawyers, um, how do I say, to the extent that at some point I said, you know, especially with that single defendant, you know. I mean. but, uh, but anyways, you know, as she grew up, I, I think that the thing that improved a lot is that we could click together. You know, I can read her twinkle in her eyes, and Mariam has a very special twinkle in the eyes. But, uh, but, uh, but basically, I could read it right away. And the way this would happen, my first practice after she uh, moved to Berkeley and, and she would, I'd be at work, I receive a text. That was kind of uh, the beginning of it. And that just tells you how improved the communication between the child and the parents. Clear communication, no overhead. So I would receive a text, Baba, I'm in the meeting. I love you so much. You are the greatest dad in the world. And I'm scrolling on the thing. Without you, this house, and then should go on. Oh my God, uh, really, this is me? Somebody thanking me finally, you know, really? <laughs> you know, the fathers rarely, rarely get this kind of, you know, thanks and stuff. But I would go and scroll on, and Baba, you are this, and Baba, you are that. And I felt very charged up. You know? So I, I say, I'm going to leave the meeting. I'm just going to respond back. So I respond back with one liner. Mariam, I just transferred $300 to your account. <laughs> She replies back, thank you very much, you are the best. So uh, this communication is clear, right? It's no overhead, no nothing. This is just a simple understanding right away. So, so, you know, things improve. You know, the good news is that, you know, as I work out with the rest of the kids, inshallah, the things improve by time. On the other hand, let me just uh, share with you uh, one last minute about my first meeting with Ziad. You know, as engineers, we kind of click. You know, we have, as, as somebody called us nerdy, I think Yusuf it was. It's really nerdy, right? When you, when you sit with engineers, I also sit with Dr. Amr. I, I find myself at home, you know, everyone's talking about architecture, you know, computer science related, electrical engineering and stuff, transistor level stuff. So we're all kind of, the, the discussion is very kind of uh, enjoy. So I remember the first day Ziad wanted to come and talk to me, and obviously he talked to me to propose to Mariam. Met outside somewhere. 15 minutes into the discussion, what was the topic? Machine learning, <laughs> mattress reduction. 
and how Ziad was telling me how he said, I'm, I look at this matrix. Uh, matrix is an engineering term for those that do not know mathematics, right? But I, I look at it and this, the eigenvalues just come out and it looks so beautiful, you know, I, that can be easily reduced and stuff like that. And then I start telling him, you know, actually, oh, I, I did a lot of work on machine learning, you know, machine learning, this, the idea of, you know, genetic algorithms and genetic programming and, yeah, I am know this and that. And then I looked at the term like 15 minutes, but I said, as yet, I think we should go back to the original topic because <laughs> I think this is getting too nerdy, man, you know, this is, we gotta, gotta get back to the real discussion. But since that day, I loved him because I felt we're clicking, I felt we're, we're speaking on the same tone. And uh, again, you know, engineers have this kind of, uh, vibes that that kind of cross but uh, wallahi alhamdulillah i i only i need testify that i have seen the best from him and i i, I am so honored and happy to have him marry uh, you know the dearest thing that i have maryam so i tell them finally barakallahu lakum and barak alaykum wa ja'ala wa jama'a baynakum fi khayr rabbil alamin may you have a very blessed long happy healthy life inshallah for you and maybe hopefully you know, will be, uh, you know, seeing your kids running around in the masjid and growing and may your home be, you know, a destination for those people that uh, love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your, your children are raised, inshallah, in the best of manners and deen. And before I, uh, I just, cl I close and before I actually forget, in addition to thanking everybody here that, uh, that attended too, I also uh, uh, wanted to let you know that our, our c caterer, is a uh, store stew. It's actually a, a store in on Saratoga. They've done a great job catering for us. Uh, if you guys like them, you know, tell them thank you. They're a four star, four plus star on Yelp. So, yeah. So finally, uh, wanted to uh, finally wanted to to congratulate Mariam again and and Ziad. It's a very joyful and happy, alhamdulillah, yani day for us. And we are even ultra happy to have you as part of our extended family, you know, and joining our joy and happiness. So finally, barakallahu lakum wa barak alaykum wa jamma baynakum fi khayr ziyad. Alhamdulillah. I actually met Mariam back in Girl Scouts where her mom and Tant Marwa, Nada's mom, were our, the two Marwas, yeah, the two Tant Marwas. Uh, but they were our Girl Scout leaders, and I have a lot of memories from Girl Scouts, but the one that sticks out the most is I was wearing black flats one day. And I came to Girl Scouts and I was so excited. My mom had just got me these flats. I felt like such a model just strutting around the MCA. But then I met Mariam, or I saw Mariam, I had met her before that. And she looks at me and she's like, why aren't you wearing socks? <laughs> and I was like, you don't wear socks with flats. She was like, yeah, you do. And so I went home and I was telling my mom, I was like, Mommy, Mariam says I should wear socks with this. She goes, just do whatever you want. And I was like, okay. But that's one of the strongest memories I have of Mariam. She was so strong in her opinions that she felt like she needed to tell me about that. But that's okay. I still love her very, very much. And actually, just recently, I went with Mariam on a Tahoe trip in the summer. And... Um, I don't know if you guys, some of you guys might not know Mariam very much, but she's a very generous person. And I had told her, I was like, you know what, we need someone to drive. Because my parents wouldn't let me drive my car. They were like, it's too old. It's going to break down. And I was like, okay. So Mariam had just got her new car, and it's her pride and joy, and it's a gorgeous car. And she had automatically said, you know, I'll drive. I was like, are you sure? She was like, yes, I got this new car. It'll be fine. I'll drive. And Mariam is such a perfect balance between chill and focused. So actually we were on the way back and we were super hyped and we were so happy that we had such a great time. And she opens up the sunroof. She's like, let's blast Fetty Wap. Let's stand in the sunroof. It's raining. She got this brand new car. She wants to open the sunroof, so we're going. I don't know how many of you guys have been to Tahoe, but those those hills are really windy. And so that's kind of when I knew <laughs> Mariam is the perfect person, mashallah. <laughs> I love her so much and I'm so happy for her. And I wish you guys both a lifetime of happiness. And those are the only two stories I'm gonna talk about. I'm not gonna talk about the drive there. <laughs> but if you wanna know, come find me after. I love you, Mariam, so much. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations, Mariam and Ziad.
So Mediam, I'm actually going to let you pick. Um, I'm either going to share the gum story or the adoption story, and you get to pick which one. The adoption story. The gum story. Okay, so let's talk about the gum story. So as I mentioned before, um, in sixth grade, Mediam and I were school rivals, um, and Mediam likes to say that I was like the popular girl who was like head of all the cliques, which is not true. It's very I true. I was the floater friend. Okay, um, but. I guess Mariam thought that there were too many sins going on in the sixth grade classroom. So I come back from recess one day, and there is uh, juicy fruit packs of gum on all of our desks. And then the only person who doesn't have juicy fruit on her desk is Mariam and her group of friends. So we all turn to her, and I'm like, what's this? And she's like, well, then she's like, there's a note. We look at the note, it says, this juicy fruit is a thank you for all the sins, for all the edge you've given me because of all the backbiting you've been doing about me. And I turned to her and I was like, actually, my mom doesn't let me chew gum, so there's that. Um, but I think that was the day I realized that, um, as I mentioned earlier, Medium embodies a lot of the qualities that I wish that I had within myself and strive to, inshallah, reach. Um, and since then, she has been one of my absolute favorite people. She's like the kind of person that you could, both of you fall off the face of the planet, and then like you see each other a few months later, and you just pick right back right, pick up right back where you were. Um, so I know that she and Ziad will, inshallah, make each other very, very happy. Um, and that they will be, as Nigad mentioned earlier, hashtag power couple. Um, and I cannot wait to see um, everything that they do together and the way that they bless, uh, the, uh, the bless those around them with their presence. Um, so, barakallahu alaikum wa barakallahu alaikum wa jama'a bainakum wa fi khair.